<clears throat> Okie dokie. Hi everyone, my name's Tom. Uh, I guess a bit of a warning, this might be a bit of a trigger for a lot. some people. You might learn something, but I know this isn't going to be for everyone. But I'm going to be talking why I'm the way I am. Uh, okay. Um, this is going to be very hard for me. Um, so I hope people can appreciate that, that this isn't something I, I get to talk about and I really want to talk about. I really don't want to talk about it, but... I've been so upset today that I feel like I should talk about it because I'm sure there are some people in a similar situation to me. Um, it's got a lot to do with narcissistic personality disorder uh, and being <laughs> raised by narcissists, but that's something I only learned in the last few years of my life. Um, I want to sort of throw it back to when I was about 16 years old. I say it's going to be a bit more of a talking head video. I might do some footage uh, when I get a bit to something I want to relate to happen today. But anyway, I want to go back to when I was like 16. My mum was hospitalized, and I've said about this in some of my other videos. I might link them below. I don't know. I haven't rewatched them because I can't. I struggle to rewatch a lot of this stuff. Uh, I think I did cover a lot about my mother's health and my situation uh, in those videos, but not to a greater extent. Uh, I'm going to talk about the mental uh, side of things now and the psychology side of things and basically how I ended up pretty much losing my mind uh, for one instance and having to go to therapy. Went to therapy to be told there was nothing wrong with me. Um, and it, it's been a whole severe ordeal on my mental health personally and I find it really hard. But anyway, going back to when I was a teenager... Um, I'm 30 years old now, so this is a good 15, 16 years ago. When my mum was first hospitalised, when I was about 11, 10 years old, she was hospitalised uh, here in the UK for about six or so years. She had, she couldn't talk, she couldn't move. Uh, she had like a, a fit uh, in her brain and a stroke and ended up basically just being paralysed down her left side. So she couldn't move anything down the left-hand side of her body. Uh, when I visited her in the hospital for those six years, at one point she was in a care home she never recognized me she she properly hated me if she did recognize me she didn't like me i don't know who or what it was but towards the end of it she really didn't like me for some reason i don't know what it was whether it was because at that point i was quite obese and she was just upset because i was her son i was so fat but then she had already made me fat so that was kind of that's kind of a different topic altogether but anyway uh, the, the connection there from basically losing my mum to then sort of being reintroduced has always been very hard. Um, she eventually came home when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And it was when she came home, as I said at the beginning there, she couldn't walk, she couldn't move. Uh, everything needed assistance. So she needed assistance going to the toilet, being moved around the house. And we had a tiny little cottage at the time. Um... Uh, it was only a few few little... way well, here, yeah, same village area I live in now, but it was a tiny little college we... Uh, cottage we grew up in and basically this was the beginning of us having to have care workers in the house which was basically at that point I think it was a uh, maybe paid by the council or something I, I don't really know but it was I think at that point we had about one to usually two care workers in the house every day uh, from eight o'clock to like at that point it was nine o'clock for about 10 or so years until it was about 25 or so uh, the time they were here was usually from eight o'clock till nine o'clock every day, including Christmas day, birthdays, everything that they're here every day, 365 days a year. And it'd usually be split between about three or four people, uh, maybe a few more. And that is a large reason why I am the way I am. Uh, very quickly, I lost a lot of, I, I, I felt it. Think of it, I guess the best way to how I feel, and I still feel to this day, because we still have care workers all, all up to this time. Uh, it makes me feel like there's like a, you know, when you've got like a plumber in the house. I mean, I don't know if that can come across. I know some people aren't bothered. The plumber himself is not bothered because he's just doing his job. And I think that's that's part of your work ethic. But uh, as a homeowner or someone that's, uh, you've got your own privacy, um, it's very different letting someone you don't know into your area. And I don't talk to these people. I've tried. I think if I, I can't count how many 
possibly over a thousand, but definitely hundreds of people, carers, each day we've had in our home over the years. We have had hundreds. We have had so much things stolen. Uh, we've had people fight. People get really nasty with each other. People do things out of spite. Some, of course, have been absolutely amazing people. Of course, outstanding people, what they do. But we have seen all the highs and lows of pretty much everything in this time period. And I still have a really hard time feeling at home when we've got care workers around now i have been fortunate enough to live in this flat area of this house that we moved into about 10 years ago so i still live at home with my parents because i've never been able to earn enough without going into debt or taking out a massive loan to buy myself my own house and the, the jobs market now is just a complete shambles uh my generation i feel hasn't got a voice so unless you're very fortunate enough to be your own business owner or take over the family business or something like that most people I'd think are quite quite struggling uh, or at least I know I know it's been very hard for me um and basically it's just been one of these things that even when I've come home from work uh there's usually been a care worker here so what I've done in the main place they sit in the house uh for the long period of time was basically in the kitchen so when we moved here my mum over the years has gotten better uh she's been able to speak a little bit she's been able to uh move around she's been able to walk she's been able to be a bit more independent as she likes to sort of say and it is very true she is quite remarkably independent and um it comes to now that the carers don't really do a great deal i think of course if there's any accidents or anything like that then of course they're they're very useful to clean things like that but on the whole they were meant to generally help with like things like cooking cleaning uh and generally just do things that my mum would do but that she can't do in the house but for the longest time that hasn't really been the case some of them have done some cooking and it's, it's been great to to help the family like that and i'm sure my dad and herself would have really appreciate the help but for a majority of time i'd like to think this comes across you think of all that time you're having basically this is uh, to the point that even before it was about seven days a week um you, you know there's, there's not a break from this this is every day every day so you can't you know you can't even always speak your mind half the time because there's always someone listening i had a really hard time when i was working uh a few years ago the basically the carers were here till nine o'clock in the evening and i would basically have to go downstairs and make my dinner and it was weird it was like i had started it's like i some of these people wouldn't talk you know some people don't want to talk or don't want to have anything communicate or whatever but what it would be like i would sit there in the kitchen cooking and there'd just be someone behind me staring at me like and it, it, this happened for years like there'd be just someone behind me looking at me and everything i do and my mum is already extremely narcissistic in terms of that she's very judgmental uh i can't go near her without her commenting something about my appearance or something i'm wearing and in a negative light it's always something to beat you up on and as i say this whole topic is so complex i i can't even begin to describe where to go with this because this is all springing on from today and basically i had one year which I can kind of show. I had one year at the beginning of lockdown with when COVID was quite a serious outbreak, uh, or at least known to be, um, that, uh, sorry, it's clicking on my page there, um, that we got rid of the care workers for about nine to 10 months. So we didn't, my mother for like about a year or so ago now, went for nearly a year without care workers. And I can tell you, she was fine. There was a, some situations where I think she needed help from her brother and her sister. Uh, when my dad wasn't around or something like that and that caused hell on earth that absolutely caused hell on earth they have really not been wanting to be involved in my mother's life uh ever i would say arguably um more recently a little bit but definitely over the years they've predominantly never been involved in my mother's life and i, I think that's quite disgraceful for someone that's meant to be a family members but anyway um but they became more involved and that upset them because they were getting more involved with my mother that's obviously quite ill and they basically argued with my father and my family to get the care workers back um and a point i'd like to show here where i the dog has actually passed away since here but 
this was kind of me then. This was me when we hadn't got any care workers. And I felt like I started walking the dog. I was exercising. I was eating healthy. I felt for the first time in my life like I was free. I was actually healing. Uh, and oh. All right, I, I, thought, I thought I'd do this video. I've always, day today. I've always wanted to do more videos like this. And... It's been very hard. Like most of the time, like if I was to go downstairs today, for example, and do a video on the Sylvia, I've got there's a there was a care worker here today on Sunday, and that's what's fundamentally upset me is that uh, even like today, um, which is usually my one day at the minute. Usually they're here six days a week, but today I'd plan to go on my dirt bike, which I rarely do uh, because I haven't really got many places to ride it due to problems on the farm and the family and situations. I uh, I haven't really, I used to have a fantastic track actually in this field, in this video, it used to be around the edge. This is basically my fantastic track I used to have. And out of spite, my, uh, I think it was my uncle, he got his little protege to do it, um, has taken away. Basically what they've done is there's meant to be a border between the hedge. You can see behind me here, there's meant to be a border. You can probably see me riding around in my old videos, to be honest. You can see how wide it is. Uh, but there's no border anymore. The, the field goes right up to the edge of the hedge. It's like there's, there's you can't even get a bike down it. You used to be able to get a car around it, but they did. They got rid of that because I started driving a car around it. Um, didn't say that, but yeah, it, it, big time things have changed. And this is the problem with narcissists. They won't per se say there's an issue, but they'll just do spiteful things behind your back. And I'll go more into the narcissistic abuse side of things. I'm just going to try and cover my point of view for a little bit here because... Uh, this whole thing is just toxic. It's just extremely toxic. And uh, I've struggled for a long time because I've basically just had always someone judging me in the house. There's always been judgmental remarks. It's almost as if uh, my mother is extremely narcissistic, unfortunately. And it's almost as if the carers have been used to add as like her satellite. So anything that I would do, the carer would comment or get involved. And all of a sudden my mother comes over and gets involved and starts being horrible to me, whether it would be judging me, telling me I'm horrible, telling me I'm useless. You know, she's a very, I, I, for one, for a long time, I've wanted to video her and my family to try and come across and I might still well do, but I, I almost feel like it's just exposing someone that's mentally ill. And I, I don't, I don't want to do that either, you know, because I do know she is not, you know, it's brain damage. It's not, she's not my mum, basically. It's, it's someone that's very, very different to who my mum was. Um, and I have a real hard time um, just trying to get over all of it. Like, it's just to act like it's normal. Like, oh, forget it. You know, just act like they're not there. Act like these people aren't there. And as I say, it's been like 16 years, you know, just every day every day just continuous but bless what happened here so we had the we had the, i was walking the dog pretty much every day bless because this dog was a rescue dog we got pepper uh, a few years ago about probably like five or six years ago and uh, i'd never really walked to that much purely because we already has carers in the house and it's very awkward for me to go downstairs get the dog have to like introduce myself to someone and always do it in pure silence, which is even more awkward. You know, you have to kind of go down and be like, hi, how are you? You know, oh, how are you good today? Yeah, oh, it's, oh, it's another one of those days. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Oh, I'm just going to take the dog for a yeah, Oh, yeah, it's a lovely day today, isn't it? You just have to do small talk every day in your own home, in your own kitchen. Every day, like it's a fucking business or something. I, it's just something I fundamentally cannot get used to. It drives me up the wall. Um, and basically going to today, I, I basically, Sunday, as I said, it was meant to be one of those days I was meant to go and have a look. If you want to know more about narcissistic abuse, and I will cover a bit more of narcissistic abuse towards the end of this video and why and how it links, but... This channel, Dr. Romani, has helped me a lot. Um, I really recommend it. Um, I think narcissistic abuse is a very big thing today, and I will do more videos probably on it as a topic in itself um, because it's something that was new to me. I wish I'd learned it when I was a kid because it's been something that's been very strong in my family for the long, longest time. Um, now, I want to go down here to some of my original videos. I can actually do it up here. Can I? I can do day oldest. Uh, so these are the, I mean, it's 11 years ago, that kind of says everything. Uh, but this one particularly, I haven't watched this in ages. 
My friend and I got this field car for fifty pounds uh, as a fiesta, I think, off of some of his auntie or uncles or something. It's quite uh, quite funny, really, actually, how cheap you could get cars for even about ten years ago. You could even get drift cars, and if that's where the drifting was big. But something we had, and these are the same fields we've always had on the farm. Uh, something we had throughout the throughout kind of growing up, particularly in this period, is that the fields all had, and even surrounding me now, they all do. Apart from ours, all the surrounding fields in our area, all the other farmers in our in our particular area, because it's a big farming area around here, have all got at least I think it's meant to be six meters gap from the hedge. It's kind of meant to be a law, I think, in case you know there was a fire or something like that. Stop like wildfires. We don't really get wildfires in the UK, but anyway, I mean it's meant to be a law. But uh, this is so me and my friend bought this car fifty pounds. We had my brother and I had had field cars growing up. But what we'd always had is we had had this grass edge. So you can see here the field is over here, the hedge is over here. And we had always had that growing up. So this is how I learned to drive. You could take a tract around the edge and not disturb the crops. And you can, uh, you know, you could do what we did. There was enough room to have a track. And this bit up here was such a beautiful track. It was so good. Like this entire thing for a little dirt time trial course or something was really good. Um... But basically, shortly after this video, it was taken away by my uncle. Uh, I'm sure out of spite. It was nothing to do with my father, at least apparently. Um, and the field now goes right up to the hedge immediately. And I, obviously, a few years ago, to anyone that's watched my channel since then, I bought a dirt bike. I couldn't do any of that anymore. I couldn't buy a cheap car and go anywhere around our fields. There's nowhere up here. Or there's two areas to our farm. There's both areas. You cannot... You cannot do that. To those that do not know, my the farm here is split between my father, my mother, and my uncle. Uh, it's probably one of the most incestuous things I've ever had to witness in my entire life. And it absolutely disgusts me, and I'm not going into topic with it. But anyway, um, that's the reality of the farm. I've never been involved with it. I've never been allowed to be involved with it. And from my understanding recently, that's been very intentional. And it's been done on purpose, as I say. It's been done very intentional. I have had interviews in my life being like, why do you not want to be a farmer? And I'm like, because I can't. They won't They won't let me. It's fucking weird. I've to now had therapy and things and realised that the situation is far more toxic than I'd ever imagined. And I'm absolutely fucking disgusted. But apparently it was three years ago now, I bought a dirt bike uh, and started to learn to ride, um, learn, learn to ride basically to taught myself. Um, and I think we could possibly even see in this one. I think I even fell off with this, which is quite funny. This bike was really good. I'd actually like another four-stroke. Um, but this is actually this field on the left. We just went around about 11 years ago. This is obviously three years ago. I don't know if we can even see it a bit. I don't think I will look. But this is that field here. I mean, you can probably even see there is no edge of the field anymore. It's gone. And there might have been in this period when I first got the bike, there certainly was... Uh, an edge of the field to a degree. Uh, I think I had to go around it. So now, this is nothing much has changed. This is kind of the similar situation. Yeah, I fell off in this. I hurt my side. I broke my collarbone in this. I don't know if I said that. Did I not say that? Lol. I, I definitely broke my collarbone in this. Um... Yeah, this was like my first ride. This was fucking sketch. If you're not, if I'd recommend riding a bicycle for a bit if you've not ridden a dirt bike before, because this shit was too much. But you can see here, the field goes right up to the hedge. Like there's no, there's no gap. So one of the only places now to ride is this field here, and it's super sketchy. Uh, it's full of equipment now. When I last went out, there was some fucking random dog walker trying to get killed. Um. And other than that, I've got to go around the actual field itself, actually on the mud. And the field, the mud around here is, uh, it's like super, it's like super clay. Unless it's dry, it's really bad clay. And uh, the tactic dry is being so soft and everything. It just basically means that unless I go really quick, which is actually quite frightening, the mud sticks to the tires and the mud sticking to the tires because it's like clay just weighs the bike down. You lose all grip, the, the knob bits on the tires get covered up and it just turns suicidal it turns so it's doing suicidal to really much like what happens here like that's fucking i'm not even gonna do that's gonna make me wince but uh yeah that was kind of my first my first ride with that bike um 
But basically that happened. I had that bike for a few years. Obviously, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I actually nearly died in this accident I had here. And I was actually doing so well. This is the kind of light fitness I'd like to get back. I mean, I look fucking, in my opinion, that's the best I've ever looked for, for a long time. That's the best I've ever looked. And that was about two years ago. That's just before the lockdown. Um, and that was basically because, actually, because I, I wasn't eating. I wasn't eating anything at all. I was just having, like, protein shakes, and that was it. And I was riding the bike a lot. And that other bike, compared to this new one, that other bike was extremely heavy, um, very top heavy. I didn't, I don't like it. I don't prefer it. This bike's definitely a lot nicer, but I'll be honest, right? I rode that other bike like once a week, probably more than once a week sometimes. This one, I've barely really ridden it since then. I, um, I got really quite depressed after this. Uh, what did I know? We actually, actually, no, I did ride it for a bit when we didn't have the care workers, but since after the, we got the care workers about, that's kind of when I've been really depressed. I started trying to stream a lot more on Twitch and Twitch failed and it's a bit fucking, uh, I, I guess it's, it's actually, it's just like TV. It's not as it seems, you know, it's fake. There's people, people are paid by big companies to pretend to be a streamer, even though they're being paid by big companies to push adverts and have sponsored deals and cheats and all the rest of it. It's just fucking, it's just TV. It's no different. It's not real. Um, there's a few people that maybe are real, but for the most part, it's not real. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, the whole thing, it's like today, basically, I wanted to, I enjoy what happens here, basically. What's the big thing? Well, I have very limited riding space. Uh, so it's hard as it is to go really anywhere on my bike around here at this point and without actually going somewhere else. And the thing is, I'm fortunate enough to live in the middle of the countryside. You'd think it's stupid that I've got fields outside my door that I can't just go and ride around a little bit of land, you know? And the thing is, it's a bike. Look how thick it is. You know, these wheels aren't fit. I don't need much, but literally they haven't yielded me anything. The bit I used to have to go around the field was about a foot wide. Um, and that, that was it really um it's now made it severely dangerous it's very scary uh it, there's there is no smooth part to go on it's yeah it's i it's good fun but fuck me it's scary um it's nowhere near as safe as it used to be and the big reason the big reason i nearly died in my bike accident is because of this this is what i was meant to link into uh you want to know why i nearly died i nearly died because my uncle took away the fields basically and i had nowhere to ride and so where i started riding was down on what's called a bridle way near me and not even meant to be on there basically um let's go to oldest because it's still some older stuff um but i wasn't this in the video that's down there now as well and that again has since changed i haven't ridden down there for years but they've they've added a, a gate and stuff since uh where is my accident video we just saw it here we go um god this is horrible but yeah i nearly died here and this has changed my life uh big time uh it's changed my perspective of things it's changed my outlook on life uh as i said i've seen since had therapy i was very much a different person i guess before the accident i wouldn't have thought something like this would would change you so much but the reason i was coming this way in the first place as I said, was because I had nowhere to ride. This was one of the few places that wasn't even ours on the farm. This is the neighbor farmers that has got uh, somewhere like this that you could just, I could just open the floor. You could just ride for a bit and not, not have to have a, like a sketchy, bumpy field that you're going over like this. Oh my God, you poor bastard. But yeah, basically this was at where I was at a really top peak of my fitness. I was basically standing up everywhere. I was, I was riding the bike standing up everywhere and I'd ridden down here a lot because it's really fun. And I think I hadn't been down here in a little while. This was the first ride in a little while I'd come down and obviously you can see it's a warm, dry day and you can see what the problem here, actually, at this pause point. The problem is, is the tractor had come down obviously fairly recent and cut the corners a bit on some of this because this was smooth. You can see how smooth it is here. But they'd cut the corner here and there's an actual, you can't see it on the video, but there's an actual ridge about like this high, just flat, where the tractor tires cut through it. And I didn't know that was there. Uh, it's basically like a solid curb. And that's what happened, that there's this basically ridge right here. The bike didn't want to go over it. It just laid on it. It didn't want to go over. You can even see the tractor tires there, actually. 
and I went from being standing up to smashing on my hip uh, and on my shoulder and everything else, and it burst an archery in my hip. And uh, I actually rode on for an another 20, 30 minutes. I went home, uh, and then I actually had some massive internal bleeding, and I was in hospital overnight until I had surgery in the morning, and I thought I was going to die. I, I've never been in so much pain in my entire life. Um, my skin, I used to be an obese child, and my skin fucking expanded to more than a football like it it wouldn't stop growing because my skin's quite stretchy and i've got stretch marks everywhere uh i'm covered in scars i've got another one to boot now um yeah i i basically it, it wouldn't stop bleeding and i i generally thought i was gonna die i couldn't go for a pee and it took me like an hour to go for a pee uh at that point and then it actually ended up basically my entire my entire groin all the way down um can I see my shit? I should be able to. It's my shit. I haven't looked at this in ages. I haven't really talked about this. But yeah, my bike accident, if it will let me. Will it not let me look at this stuff on it? Oh, shit. This website's a load of shit. So I can't open... Well, you can kind of see there, really, unfortunately. That's a shame I can't go through it. But on my stories there, I've got a whole list of my stories. Uh, my whole groin was fucked, and this was after my surgery. But, um, but yeah, I nearly died. That was that was not really fun. I have definitely chased it. Oh, wait, it's open this one, though. Oh, is it going to be? Yeah, so that's kind of when it first happened. That was when I was in the hospital. Uh, and it, that was just the beginning, really. Um... Yeah, not cool. Not cool. I had a lot of time to reflect uh, at that point in my life. I was definitely not in the best position. Uh, it's definitely changed me mentally. I've not really seen any of this. God, yeah, that's the... Yeah, sorry, not safe for work. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just... I At that point as well, I've always wanted to be a paramedic, and I thought well, it would be nice to go back and be a paramedic, but um many colors god that i can still feel that tube i can still feel that tube my bone as well is nowhere near uh my bone is nowhere near what it used to be i can feel my hip on my right hand side has got quite a nice bone the hip on my left hasn't really got any bone um yeah not quite. and that was only about 20 30 mile an hour on that but I don't know. So there's a lot of things I've talked about here. Um, I don't know if this kind of comes across. Basically, I guess finally kind of talk a bit about, I guess, sort of narcissistic abuse. I mean, effects of narcissistic abuse. Now, this is something that only really twigged to me a couple of years ago because I, um, as I said, I've had a mi mixed relationship with my mother. There has been maybe one or two times... I would say maybe a month when I used to be more involved in the family of the last 10 years, where if I spoke to her, she actually felt like my mum. Maybe once every couple of months, maybe a couple of times a year, there'd be a there'd be almost a, a you know a couple of bit of conversation you could have that actually felt quite nice. But for the most part, she's very demanding. Uh, she's someone that's because she's always had care workers in the house she's very demanding of me and my dad and anyone in the family uh, she's become I wouldn't want to say lazy but that essentially is I know she's disabled and has a hard time but it's it's become there's a lot of things that she can do that she won't do um, even though she demands that she really wants her independence it's this whole sort of cycle of uh, basically emotional abuse um and it took me a long time to understand it. I, I, it's really something that's affected my life heavily. Um, as I say, it's something narcissistic abuse you're going to have to look into. Um, I don't really want to go over it in this video anymore. I've already probably made this too long. Um, you know, this is already probably going on yeah, nearly half an hour. So I, I probably won't go into it now. Um, but what had basically happened, uh, this was about two years ago or so, um that i had a i was talking to my mother and i can't remember what brought it up but i basically said to her like you hate me don't you, you actually just hate me it's, it's quite clear at this point she's got some sort of prejudice against me um and 
I think I said to you, you know, you, you wouldn't even, because she is very, very cold. There, there's, as I say, the brain injury is quite actually intriguing to how it works because she's, it's just very cold. Um, it's a frontal lobe in, injury, which is, which is a big part of who you are. So it's, there's like kind of no emotions there. And yeah, anyway, um, it's one of these where she basically ended up manipulating me. And I just basically said, I bet, you know, you, you fucking hate me, don't you? And all the rest of it. And she called my uncle or her brother. And she called my friend. Uh, well, my, well, a couple of my friends, but at least one of my friends that I didn't know about at the time. I hadn't seen in a very long time at that point. Uh, I think she'd called my brother and a few other people. And she told everybody that I was going to kill myself. And I was losing my mind and I was going crazy. And I had basically, I got cornered in my flat here or in the place I live here in the, in the flat in, the, in this house. I got cornered basically saying, what's wrong with you? You know, you need to go and talk to someone. This is before I had therapy. You know, you're, you're, this is basically like you're crazy. Why are you acting crazy? If you want to act crazy, come and talk to me. Don't act crazy in front of your mum and all this sort of stuff. Um, and my friend actually came over ironically, but I, I didn't really expect, cause I say I hadn't seen him in bloody over, probably over a year at that point. Uh, so just randomly come over was just fucking weird. Um, you know, we just bless him in that, but it's, it's just, it was not really helping the situation. And I had a bit of a talk with my friend and I think I went downstairs and there was everybody there my mum had like brought in her flying monkeys all to do her bidding and take her side and she sat there as i had like i was crying i was fucking because i didn't know what to do i was put in a position where i had to like try and like explain myself on display i was put on a stage with a spotlight and been like what's wrong with you tom you're clearly like brain damaged or something aren't you you know why are you so horrible and um, I came downstairs, you know, tears and everything down my eyes. And my mum looked at me with a look I'll never forget. And she gave me this look of just, like, complete smirk. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you could be rubbing the hands like an evil villain, she would have been. Thankfully, she's only got fucking one hand. Um, and, and basically, yeah, I, I'll never forget that. That was the most upsetting thing I think I've seen ever because it's just... My own mother had basically organized this sort of triangulation of flying monkeys to all come and attack me. I proceeded to then have therapy after that. Uh, I was very open and honest with her. You know, I, I was about my situation, about the family here, uh, about my life, my upbringing. Um, and after about eight weeks of talking to her, um, she kind of turned around and said to me, I was like, Tom, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, like you, you basically your best situation here is to cut contact. And uh, she actually recommended me to basically just go and try and get any job I can, go and stack a shelf at bloody Tesco's, uh, which is a supermarket near me, and just try and make my way out of here. But the actual reality of even working a job like that, and I, I, I still wouldn't get out of it. There's, there's no way. That's why I've been doing videos and content because I'm the hope that maybe like some of these big youtubers or big twitch stars or big streamers or content creators some of these people are making hundreds of thousands of pounds a year uh they're making a serious living that changes their life you know turns their life around and that's kind of what i was hoping i, I said to my channel years ago that what i really wanted to do is i i really wanted to basically you, you want to know what i really want to do i've got the silver the ps13 silver it's in the garage hasn't been touched i is the most that in itself is a depressing story and i need to do videos on it soon i bought this car probably like three or four years ago and i've only driven one tank of fuel in it and it's got its second tank of fuel sitting in it right now and it hasn't moved there's nothing wrong with it, it, it the turbo is a bit loose but i tighten the turbo which is a common problem if i tighten the turbo which is a whole bit of an ordeal it she's good to go and uh what I'd want to do for the channel, what, what, and this is what I said years ago, I want to take that car across Europe, like I did with some friends, like back in 2013, one of the best things I've ever done in my life, and uh, just drive across Europe, make make video logs of me just driving across Europe, or 
whether that would be nice to be nice if I had a partner or something to do it with. But this was one of the best times of my I've ever had driving. Like it was one of the one of the most visually pleasing experience as and just the the road and everything just beautiful. Stunning. I, I the roads are smooth and clean. I was in my Citroen Saxo here. Um my goal is the whole thing with these cars. I wanted a DC2 Type R to go and do this. Um, that's what I wanted. I wanted a DC2 Type R to go and do what the Saxo kind of couldn't in the, in that sort of area. And uh, I kind of hoped the channel might be popular enough at one point that it would it would basically sort of fund me getting a better camera. It would fund me going to trips like this. Uh, I, at one point, uh, back in sort of this period, I actually had a Google AdSense account. I was making money eventually on some of my videos. You can see I was because of the views they got. They don't get any views now. No one watches any of these now because the Google AdSense got taken away. The rules changed from having, I think, a couple of hundred subscribers to you had to have a thousand subscribers. And for someone that's done it pretty genuine as me, I haven't paid for any subscribers. I haven't paid for any views. I actually have paid for views. And on the videos I can show you that I have is like this one was paid for views. Thousand views on that, apparently. And I think there's another one I did paid views on. It's a rally one. It stands out quite a lot because no one watches the rally videos. Um it's somewhere but there i've done those twice just to give it a go and it, it's bullshit but i think that's what a lot of people this one here career dirt rally and dirt 2.0 career events 1000 views bullshit it's fake um you know the rest of them are real you know there's a few videos i have done well with my uh sorry for scrolling so much but it's a few videos with the like this i'm happy this has done well but then again that's a gopro video which is funny because a lot of the content i've made hasn't been anything to do with gopro it's been it's been it's been recorded from games and stuff off of the computer. Um, same as top four pitch, uh, Switch games. I'm glad that's sort of done well. And this other one's done quite well. But the rest of them, just no one gives a shit. And my old videos, as I said, just haven't done anything. But that's kind of wanted on the channel. I, I just wanted, I wanted either the, the Integra, I wanted the Sylvia to basically go and do more driving videos. We could go and do drift days. I'll video my day out and you could see like good for point of view videos as well as video log of that day. And uh, with working 60 hours a week when I was before, I didn't have any spare time to do that and I didn't really have any spare cash. And with now, I haven't got any money to go and do anything like that, even though I've got spare time. Um, so the, the cars just sat there. That's it. I don't get any help from my parents or anything, so it's just... That's it. The only money I make at the minute is from mining. I've got a, a mining setup that I use to reinvest in on itself. That's my main income at the minute. It's doing really well. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Basically, there's, there's a whole thing here. I've glossed over a lot in this. Um... I don't even know how to finish it because there's a lot more I want to say. There's a there's a lot more. We've only we've only scraped the iceberg of this shit. Uh, and I think, as I say, effects of narcissistic abuse go very in depth. Uh, I'd suggest looking it up. Uh, narcissistic personality disorder. Um, in a, in a good sense, this is what Instagram is. This is what Facebook is. It's narcissist appealing to narcissist. Twitter is a great one. There's a narcissist appealing to other narcissists. Like, who can be the biggest fucking dickhead? And who can dance the most for them? Um, the grandiose self, sense of self-importance. Lives in a fantasy world that supports their delusions and grandeur. Needs constant praise and admiration. Sense of entitlement. Exploits others without guilt or shame. They have no shame. Frequently demeans, intimidates, bullies, or belittle others. Judgmental fucks. Um... Something that basically is a big deal with it is that I see a lot at the minute, particularly with the lockdowns and stuff, people taking their own life. And I think it's hard for people to turn around and be like, why would anybody want to take their own life? I can tell you first and foremost, narcissistic abuse, whether it be from, a, as I said, triangulation of people, flying monkeys, all people ganging up on someone, to gaslighting you, whether it's that, whether it's at work, whether it's even people online on social media, people will bully you and make you feel like you are basically worthless and you should take your own life. And I fundamentally, I didn't understand a great deal. Even though I've, I've been that depressed with alcohol, which is another video I need to talk about, uh, about being suicidal and things. It's generally, 
narcissists will drive someone to suicide and i i've seen actually quite a few cases now that after understanding the psychology of this toxic nightmare that you can recognize that in some films and in some real life situations even that people have done that that's actually happened people have been that traumatized and abused that they have taken their own life just just because it's so horrible um, and obviously it's essentially murder, but it will be taken as a suicide. And uh, I'd like to point it and leave it probably here. The narcissist will basically turn around and say, oh, he was always doing this, or he was always doing that. The narcissist will basically encourage that it was never anything to do with them, and it was the person that took their own life's fault. That's how narcissistic they are. They would blame the person for killing themselves. <laughs> it's, it's, it's utterly staggering, but it's a severe toxic trait in our, in our society that is not talked about and not well understood. Um, and as I said, if anyone does find this, oh shit, that's my dad, or you know, that's my friend, or something like that. As I said, go and check out Dr. Romani um she has some fantastic videos that have that have basically just made me relate to it. i i've had a few that i've been very very hard listening like today i've had a very hard day uh just with i i wanted to go and ride my bike and i wake up and i'm oh i, I get woken up by some twat banging around downstairs that's putting washing on at fucking eight o'clock in the morning because i paid to do it um and slamming doors in and out of the house every few seconds and fucking stomping around and being noisy i just you just it's just it's, it's apartment living in the fucking countryside apparently um yeah it, it's just a whole thing i find myself going to days like today where i find it hard and i think what's the point i feel like giving up i come and watch like people like dr romani um as i said this video has been very hard for me i've rambled i've talked my brain's all over the place i want to try and bring my point across without trying to sound like i'm a baby uh with just basically oh my mum doesn't do this and my parent doesn't do that because that's not really the case it, get, it gets quite the severity of mental illness here uh, and i can't escape i can't escape you know if if i did i, I wouldn't have anything i i just I, and I don't have anything really i don't i don't i i just don't have anything anyway i'm gonna leave it there before i i just I dig myself a hole. So thank you very much. If you've watched this, thank you very much. Uh, if you understand, I really appreciate it. You know, that that's a big deal. The people that support my channel I really do mean a lot to me. And I know there's a group of people that do support my channel. Uh, and I'm very grateful. I'm really, very grateful. Uh, you guys are awesome. So uh, I, I'm doing this because hopefully in a few years' time we can reflect on this. Um, you know, we can reflect and basically turn around and see where I was to where I am now reasons i said earlier so we could do some better videos better content on the channel maybe get paid and make this my living but right now it's oh very tough All right peace bye bye